Hello, McDyer's Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Gabriel Clark, who's the producer of the Jack Charlton movie that's coming out on the 23rd of November. Gabriel, thanks very much for taking the time out to have a chat with me. It's a pleasure. How are you? All good, all good. Uh, well, listen, um, I'm just going to to start off with, because I've, I've, I've watched the film, I think it's absolutely brilliant, but what was the inspiration behind it? The inspiration behind it, um, it's, it's a difficult one, that, because I, I had no um, real thought process in my mind to make a film about Jack Charlton initially. What, what intrigued me was the Irish story uh, during those World Cup years, uh, well, from 88 through to 94 with Jack, and how it maybe hadn't been told from a sort of um, a perspective which took in the transformative nature of the story in relation to Ireland um, at that time and how much the football team success led by an Englishman um, was able to have this big influence on the country. So that was my initial sort of um, first thought about it. I then had a chat with Andy Townsend, who I knew well from ITV and Andy sort of agreed that even though there had been some sort of football documentaries about just the football, um, from those years, there hadn't been anything broader, which would would be something that would appeal to a UK as well as an Irish audience. A, a week later, we were having a chat with John Charlton. Andy Andy picked up the phone, rang John Charlton, Jack's son. We headed up to the northeast. We met Jack and John in a pub up there, and um, we we moved forward with an idea that soon became more about Jack, partly because of uh, Jack's dementia, um, living with dementia, and we knew that would be a big part of the film, but also just because it was clear from starting to research the story how much Jack's own interviews about that and his notes and the archive that we uncovered was going to make it um, a film that would resonate through his eyes. Yeah, because, you know, obviously John is in the film and stuff like that, but I think it does, it, it captures the imagination and how much, I suppose, the Irish fans really love them. But kind of, I have a colleague of mine, Gary Spain, who who had asked me to ask a couple of questions just in regards, because he it would have been more his time. When Jack kind of came to the end of his time, I was only five years of age and I'm only getting to see the highlights, but he actually lived through this time. Um, he's he's unfortunately not able to jump on the call this time, but he, he has asked me to ask you, he's just said, Jack was so loved in Ireland, I think you captured that well in the film, but it also appears outside of Leeds and the Northeast. He wasn't loved or respected, sorry, outside of Leeds and the Northeast of England. Well, I think a lot of that had to do with um, the fact that he played for Leeds United and Leeds United were um, pretty much hated by every team they came up against and every football fan during that era of the sort of late 60s, um, 1970s they were just a, a team that took professionalism to uh, a new level and or a new low as maybe some of their uh, opponents would say so jack was known for being one of the leading um protagonists in this team that that beat most beat most teams that they came up against and was as hard as nails and was not afraid to do the dirty stuff although they could play a bit but they almost played up to that cynical reputation leads. And uh, we cover it we, we cover it a little bit in the film. So I think that's one of the reasons why Jack wasn't the most popular figure um, outside of Leeds and the Northeast of England during his playing career. But after his playing career finished and when he became a manager and he became a television pundit and he became a documentarian as well, he made his own factual programs he then started to flourish. I mean, he was a celebrity. He was on programs like Parkinson and Wogan. He had a natural ability before he went to Ireland. You could see it here in England where he would connect with people. He was funny. He could tell a joke. He was authentic. He was outgoing. He was passionate. And so um, I think by the time that he went to Ireland, he was more loved than you might, you might think in England. He was... He, he was Jack Charlton, the World Cup winner with England. And that also, you know, that did make him pretty popular too. But he was also now this, um, this figure who was almost above English football, but had been let down by English football, he felt, because he wanted the manager's job. The FA said apply and they didn't get back to him. 
So at that point in 1985, when Ireland picked up the phone to him, um, part of him, I, th I think, couldn't wait to go over there and start something special. Yeah, that he did. But just you mentioned previously about the detailed notes and, and just kind of the detailed notes on show in the film prove, you know, the amount of preparation Jack did for games. Do you think that will nail one of the falsehoods his critics used against him? Absolutely right. I, I really hope it does because, um, yeah, it, it underlines this, this sense that this was uh, something that he thought about. This was something that as simple as the methods were, as simple as the method was, it, it wasn't just um, uh, something that uh, every team could do. It was ahead of its time. Um, Jack said it at the time, and um, he knew that this was a this was the way that Ireland were going to have to shake up international football if they were to compete with the best teams, which is what they did during his time as manager. He beat pretty much all the best teams in the world, and. Um, so, yeah, I, it was a really good discovery for us. His wife gave us these notes to look at, and there they were on sort of the back of menus and the back of um, little notepads and pieces of paper, not the best spelling, not the cleanest handwriting, but the essence of what he was putting down on paper about the way to play, the key to getting the best out of his players, um, man management and philosophy. I mean, these are... These are in essence, really strong tactical and philosophical um, dictums, which I think, you know, on a, on a coaching course or a leadership course, people pay thousands to, um, to get this sort of innate knowledge, you know, but it was there on paper. And um, I think it underlines that, yeah, Jack was a coach that, you know, if you, if you just said it, oh, it's just kick and rush what you did he would rightly say to you, you don't know what you're talking about and how much thought has gone into this. Yeah, and just with his dementia, you know, it's it's so sad, but it's also uplifting. Uh, is there a particular message you want people to take from this film slash documentary? Yes, uh, I think um, it would be that um, uh, you can live with dementia and live a life that is full. And it's certainly something that the Alzheimer's societies have uh, the UK and Ireland uh, always want to underline and um, Jack during the making of the film when we were with him he was he was having uh, he was trying to live a fulfilled life with his grandkids with his wife Pat going to his charity um, going fishing um, going to the pub enjoying a meal so as hard as it was for him I think and it is you are obviously with that condition detached and uh, you, your memory is is um, is declining. You are still able to be present in so many ways, and there are really powerful moments in the film when Jack is present, when he does engage with the camera, when he does remember things. So I think hopefully, it, it, if there's a message, it's it's an inspirational one in terms of how Jack and his family dealt with that situation which is going to face so many millions of people in the years to come, and it's, which is why it's so important that we uh, continue the research to find a cure. Uh, and, and also, hopefully, for those people like myself who have no uh, history of dementia in my family, for those people, it gives you an idea of just what is involved with a condition and an understanding uh, of it. I think one of the best and, and nicest things in the film is where he's sitting down on the laptop and uh, Paul McGrath flashes up on screen and he says, oh, Paul McGrath, and he gets, you know, a smile and he kind of, because he just kind of seems not with it. And then when he sees Paul, he kind of comes to life a little bit. Yes, and that, that you know, we, we were told with our research and we're talking to people that that's very much what happens with people who are living with dementia. The, the short-term memory is um, gets harder and harder. But um, yes, looking at old footage, listening to old music um, is a wonderful way of uh, triggering the um, triggering the memory. You know, so it, it's there. It, it's just obviously fading. And, um, you know, Pat Charlton um, obviously was there when we were filming those scenes because, you know, she herself knew the value of that and um, how, how good good some of those moments were for Jack. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Just my last question, and Gary had asked this 
as well. You just said Larry Mullen mentioned reclaiming the nation's flag. Jack was one of the most adored people in the country's history. Do you think his family and those outside the country realise how much he meant to us? I hope so. I hope, I hope this film is a way of underlining that for them. I mean, one of the, you know, it, it was great to be able to film at, at Jack and Pat's house. And you see towards the end of the film, um, hanging on the wall there, the uh, honorary citizenship that Jack and Pat were awarded by Ireland. So I think that hopefully gives you a good idea. It certainly is, is their proudest possession, I think. You know, maybe even more so than the World Cup winners medal, at least jointly, you know, because it, it was awarded to them both. And and um, I think that citizenship, it was never made a knight in the UK. So that citizenship was just um, incredible for him to achieve. And, and and it goes back to where we came in, really, how how an Englishman at that time came came to Ireland and transformed the country and became one of them. And it and became ultimately, yeah, literally one of them because he has the Irish, honorary Irish citizenship, which is almost unheard of. I think it's brilliant as well because Pat made sure that she, she let it be known that she has the citizenship too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she, there are two passports, not one. Yeah, well, it's, it's an absolutely brilliant film and I would encourage anybody uh, to, to, to go and watch it, go and buy it, go and see it. It's out on the 23rd of November, is that right? Yes, it's out on the 23rd of November, so on all your um, digital downloadable platforms. It's on DVD as well in the shops, but uh, so it'll be on uh, well, Sky, iTunes, Amazon, all, all, all the places where you can download and watch. And, um, and then it's going to be coming to cinemas in Ireland as well. Once your lockdown is lifted, we're reassured that I think something like 30, 35 cinemas across Ireland, once you're out of lockdown on uh, December 2nd, all being well. Uh, so, it, uh, you know, if, if you can go to the cinema, I think it's one of those films in the cinema that uh, we've made it for the cinema too, so it'll look good on the big screen. Absolutely. I, I, well, I would just encourage anybody um, that likes Irish football or wants any sort of history towards Jack. It's an absolutely outstanding film, documentary. Um, but Gabriel, I'd say absolute top class work. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to other people getting the feedback, even on this video, but also from the film itself. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, take care. All the very best. Thank you. Thanks very much.